Hi guys, it's Cindy Leach, your Polymer Clay Tutor, and today's studio tip, I'm going to show you the difference between drilling holes in polymer clay when it's raw versus when it is baked. Now, a lot of times I see somebody on the internet or wherever, they're cutting out, they cut out their pendant or whatever piece, they've done something fancy to it, they've cut it out, and then they go and they put a hole in the top by just taking some sort of skewer or needle tool or something and they just make their hole like this when it's raw. And the problem with that, depending on the size that you do it, there's a few problems with doing it that way. First of all, I don't know if the camera will pick up on it too much, but you can get a fair amount of distortion um, right in the area where it bulges out. This clay has to move somewhere. So when you're stretching it around like that, it'll it'll bulge out sometimes here. It's pretty subtle on this piece, but it can, depending on where it's at. And then the hole is uneven, it's puckered up in the center, and it just generally doesn't look that professional. A much cleaner and better looking hole in your bead is when you have drilled it after it's been baked. And these are just uh, sample slices of uh, clay that have been cut out. But if you can see here, this is much, much cleaner hole. Now, it's super easy to do. It also gives you a much, um, it gives you more of an option. So say you've baked up a bunch of different pieces um, and part with you, you th you're thinking, well, maybe I'd like to drill two holes in it, maybe I want a hole on this side and this side, or maybe I just want a hole here, or maybe I don't want a hole at all and I want to put a, a bale on the back. So if you've, when you bake it, if you don't put pre put a hole in it, then you've got more choices afterwards. But say you decide that you do want a hole in the top of it, all you need to do is take a piece of wood or a chunk of plastic or something to have behind your piece and then you can drill right in it by hand. And in fact, that is the easiest and safest way to go about it, um, is to just use a drill bit and drill it by hand. Now, I've got a few, you know, this is what typical drill bits look like. You buy them, you can buy them anywhere, at the hardware store, or even at the dollar store, if you're lucky to find them there. You don't need good quality drill bits, you just, need ones that are good enough for wood because polymer clay is super soft and then you also just need whatever size that you want so sometimes you're going to have to look harder if you want like a really small one like that or a little bit larger hole i used to put them in a handle of polymer clay and you can certainly do that if you want to but there are some I found that it, they can kind of break loose from the polymer clay unless you bend a little L in the drill bit first, which is really quite difficult to do. So um, I prefer to just use something else, and they're usually called a pin vise. Now here is a typical pin vise here. This is a double-ended one, and it just is a little, you just untwist the end and you can slide your um, drill bits in. This one I've got two ends, so I've got two different sizes, which is great. But these will also work as well. These are actually just X-Acto knife um, holders. And you can see, so for example, here's an X-Acto one with a blade in it. If I remove the blade from it, they usually have like a little round hole in the end that can be expanded and stretched out and you can put any of the smaller drill bits into it. Um, this one here actually was more, um, it had a larger, it's called a collet, but it had a, a larger collet that I could fit this fatter uh, drill bit into, but this one was a, an X-Acto blade. Anyways, before I go on too much about that, you can um, just drill right into the clay. Let me start with them this size here, that'd be fine. And you just uh, make a little mark where you want the hole to go. So if you wanted to, you could measure it out. And if you just sort of push into the clay first, it'll leave a dent. And then I'm just going to twist my drill bit right into the clay. 
Now, if you have the wood in behind, it will support it and usually make a nice clean hole for you. And instead of distorting the clay, it just, you just, uh, the clay just comes up in, in little spirals and uh, comes right out. Then you can come from the backside if you want and then just uh, clean it out that way. And that will give you a really nice clean hole. You can even drill through resin if you've already put resin on your piece and you've decided now that you want to put uh, a hole in it, you could do that as well. So I'm just going to kind of press a little spot into it and then just make sure that I've got it so that it'll turn. Actually, I'm going to press this one in. It's a little pointier. Give me a bit of a hole to start off with. Now this is a tapered drill bit. Sometimes they're called tapered burrs. This one is, um, you can find them sometimes with um, Dremel carries them and they're a great little uh, taper drill bit that you can use really pointy on one end and uh, they just get wider and wider so I'm just going to show you that you can just drill right through the resin it's a little bit harder to push down a little bit harder but you can still get right through it and then when you get to the polymer clay side it goes through quite easily now if you had a a hand drill, you could use that. There are some little um, hand drills that work on a uh, kind of a screw system where you push up and down. I forget what that's called. That works great too. Here, I'm just getting through the resin layer. There we go. Right through the clay, you can see the pinks coming up. And then I can come from the back side to clean that hole right up. And you can see that is a nice, clean, professional looking hole. Much better than those dorky, puck puckered up, uneven holes that you've squished in when the clay was raw. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, do let us know. And if you have any um, comments, suggestions, ideas for future videos, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. And don't forget, we have a great resource over at PolymerClayTutor.com where you can find the answers to all of your polymer clay questions. We'll see you next time and bye for now.